Hello, I'm Samantha Stageman. I am a second year doctoral student at Wright State University School of Professional Psychology. And today I am going to be talking about emotion regulation strategies used among autistic children during early childhood. And please see the QR code on the screen if you would like to see the full research poster for this presentation. First, I am going to give a brief overview of emotion regulation and autism. Emotion regulation is a skill in the initial stages of development during early childhood. And autistic children often struggle with this skill and experience emotional dysregulation. The research suggests that characteristics of autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, contribute to these difficulties with emotion regulation. Some of these characteristics include experiencing difficulty identifying and understanding emotions and social cues, having heightened sensory sensitivities, experiencing difficulties with change, and having a biological predisposition to emotion dysregulation. And so considering emotion regulation difficulties, this review of the literature aims to identify ways emotion regulation strategies vary between autistic children and their typically developing peers so that clinicians can use this information to inform emotion related interventions for this population. So let's dive into what the research says about emotion regulation strategies used among autistic children during early childhood. When compared to typically developing peers, autistic children during early childhood tend to continue relying on caregivers to co-regulate their emotions rather than using more self-reliant strategies. And this delayed shift to self-reliant strategies is attributed to a slowed progression toward independence and self-reliance among autistic children. Also, when compared to typically developing peers, autistic children during early childhood use less constructive strategies, such as vocal venting or avoidance, when caregivers are absent. And such observations can be connected to autistic children being more reluctant to turn to someone who is not a caregiver to help regulate their emotions which can have implications as children spend more time away from caregivers with increasing age. The research also shows that when compared to typically developing peers, autistic children during early childhood may lack exposure to more advanced emotion regulation strategies since their caregivers tend to use simpler strategies to help their child regulate, such as physical comforting rather than emotional reframing, for example. The research also, show, also shows that when compared to typically developing peers, autistic children during early childhood do not effectively reduce the intensity of a felt emotion when using an emotion regulation strategy. And the ineffective use of an emotion regulation strategy is evidenced by greater emotional reactivity among autistic children. And so what do we need to take away from all of this? Well, when working on emotion regulation skills with autistic children, it is essential to understand the emotion regulation strategies they use and in what context. Having this information will inform clinicians as to where they need to intervene. Interventions could occur in the following ways, such as guiding the child to develop effective self-reliant strategies, helping the child to generalize emotion regulation skills across individuals aside from caregivers, and also teaching them to utilize their emotion regulation strategies more effectively. And teaching effective and age appropriate emotion regulation strategies to autistic children is essential during early childhood to allow them to develop more independence and to prevent later emotional and behavioral concerns. And so the last topic I wanna to touch on is future research. An important consideration for autism-based research overall is to recognize and include autistic individuals with varying skill levels. Most research, including the research dis discussed here, includes participants deemed high functioning. And we all know that autism exists on a spectrum. Therefore, it's important to include autistic individuals across skill levels so that research can be used to inform interventions for this entire population. And so that's the end of my presentation and here are my references. Thank you so much for listening.